I'm going to show you how to reflect a shape and I'm going to also show you how to use uh, some baking paper or parchment paper it's sometimes called. Uh, if you're at school we would give you tracing paper but this is a very good alternative if you're working from home. So first of all uh, I need to reflect this shape in the line y equals 5. So the first thing I've got to do is draw that line in. So y equals 5, this means that every point on this line will have a y coordinate part of 5. So it's going to cross the y axis at 5. It's going to draw that line in. Now, when we're reflecting shapes, every point has to be exactly the same distance away from the line of reflection, but on the opposite side. So we can do a counting method, that's absolutely fine, but I'll just show you how to use this tracing paper. So if I trace over my shape, roughly like that, and I also just want to show where the mirror line is. And what I then do is just flip that over and position it again. This time the mirror line and the, the pencil mark is the opposite side of the paper. So I can go over this side of the tracing paper and I should, I remove that. I don't know if you can see it on the uh, video here, but you can see a very faint line of where the reflected image will be. And once you've got that reflected image, then you can go over it with your pencil and make it more obvious. Okay, so that's this shape reflected in the line y equals five. I now need to reflect it in the line y, uh, sorry, x equals 6. So every x coordinate will be 6 on this line, so it's going to go through the line x equals 6 on the x-axis. So this is x equals 6. So looking at the shape, I can use my tracing paper again. Okay, you can see that part of the shape this part here actually lies on the line of x equals 6. So these points here will remain invariant. They're not going to change, but the rest of the shape will flip over here. So I can move this over and use my tracing paper again. Go over the shape. Again, it's very faint, but you get a general idea of where the points are. You can use a counting method. This point is three away from x equals six. So the reflected point will also be three away from x equals six. This point is five away from x equals six and so on. Sometimes you only need to get a couple of points and then you can reason out where the other ones will be. So that's the reflection in the line x equals six. Uh, finally, I need to reflect this shape in the line y equals x. So I'm going to do that on a separate sheet, otherwise it just gets a little bit too busy. So I want to draw the line y equals x. If you can't remember um, how to draw that line, every y coordinate is the same as the x coordinate. So this line will go through 0, 0, 1, 1, 7, 7. 15, 15, and so on. Okay, so let's just plot a few points that I know are going to lie on that line. Once I've got just a couple of points, I can then position the line and I can draw it in. So this is y equals x. Now, if you have got a diagonal line, these are a little bit trickier than the um, horizontal and vertical lines in terms of counting squares. But here's a tip, if you want to, if you just rotate your paper around like that, it's actually much easier, I think, to see how far away from the mirror line that shape is. I'm going to do it using the tracing paper though, just to show you again how you can use it. So I'm going to trace over the shape Trace over the mirror line as well. 
and I'm going to flip it over and reposition it here. So just going over the other side of the paper, lift it off. Again, I've got a very faint impression, but it's good enough to see where the points should be. It's also important to remember that this shape will be congruent. So it will look exactly the same. It's just been flipped over. So all the lengths will be the same. The angles are the same. It's just in a different position and it's been flipped over the line of reflection.